Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint the carnation. Now I don't know if you knew but the carnation is January's birth flower along with the snowdrop. A bit like how we have birthstones for each month of the year. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right folks we're going to draw a carnation today and we're just going to draw the one I think. So give it a nice wiggly stem and have the flower at the top there so with pencil lines I like to do a curve at the base of where the flower is going to protrude and a carnation has beautiful sort of slender leaves so let's mix up a bit of sap green to start off with. I had no idea that the carnation was a January flower I guess it's one I, I don't, I don't know, I don't often see growing. I see it in bouquets more and you, you become a bit disconnected, don't you, with where these flowers um, like to live and when they like to come out. Um, my flower knowledge is small but growing, is all I will say, because I love to paint them, but I'm not a particularly green-fingered person. Okay, so I've got some green gold and some sap green. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, before any of you wondered if I had a sort of encyclopedic knowledge of flowers. I, I really don't, but I am a true admirer from afar, let's just say. Okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, actually quite a large brush. I've got a size four, and I am going to begin from just a little bit further down from that cup base, and I'm painting in the green gold stem and just going nice and gently a little bit thicker at the bottom and then we'll have our stem going off there and now a little bit of sap green just gonna drop it in drop it in drop it in just at the sort of junctions and at the bases just beneath where it turns into a budding flower. And now, this bit I'm rather looking forward to, some of these beautiful ribbon-like leaves. Protruding out from the same point a lot of the time. And I'm just using sap green. And I'm just allowing the, the brush to sort of dance about a bit. And I think that looks rather nice. So we'll add in a few more up the stem. And because it's still wet, we're getting a lovely blend out towards the sort of uh, other ends of the stem. And then we'll pop in one or two more Because although a lot of them grow in parallels they don't always and then we'll do two dinky ones here yeah it reminds me of an unfurling rippling flag now it's time to think about the petals so we're going to have an open flower up here and then we're going to have a sort of a bud here so we'll focus more on this one here so my first thought is we have in a carnation you have a sort of central tighter cup of flowers and then around them you have more petals that sort of unfurl and come out and one of the wonderful things about carnations is the beautiful shape the beautiful colors and patterns you get within the petals themselves there's a lot of color blend there's yeah there's just a lot going on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing a slow build-up of colour and I'm going to go for a bit of alizarin crimson so I'm going to get that mixed up in my palette and I'm going to create it into a little bit of a blush colour so I'm going to get some cadmium orange and we're just going to mix so that it goes into almost like a rhubarb colour a warm sort of 
yeah, a warm sugary dark pink, which I think is just lovely. Okay, so we've got the paint ready. Now I'm just going to let this dry a little bit so I don't stick my hand in it when I'm about to start painting the petals. So let's just let this dry one moment. So this is nice and dry now, and I've got my large brush again, size four, and I'm going to begin this uh, in a similar manner as I would a peony. I'm going to paint the central cup first, and what I'm doing is I'm sort of painting C curves to sort of create the outline of a petal shape, and then I'm going to just put in another C curve around the back, and another one just in here as well. Now, the so one of the rather defining factors of a carnation, well, I will say there are many, many different species, but I'm going to create some with a rather dramatic sort of pink frilled edge. So what I'm going to do with this wet color now is just frill my brush around the edge of it and some of it will catch and some of it won't. And that has started us off really nicely for the sort of central cup of our carnation. So what I'm going to do now is very carefully I'm going to start building up petals emanating out from essentially imagine everything is anchored there so the petal is growing out from there so I'm using a size 4 brush to do a very loose petal kind of shape and then I am using a size 3 tenths to just edge that wet shape and there are lovely little bits of unpainted space. And there are going to be little blends and bleeds here and there but that's fine because the way I like to paint is just a little bit loose and a little bit sort of uh, wayward. I always find the best description of my flower painting is I like to capture the essence of a flower rather than it being a rigid study. I like to base my sort of the way, I, I like to look at a reference image always. So I am using the real thing as my inspiration. However, I'm interpreting it as I go along. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep building up these petals around the edge and just finding places to, there we are, fill in these petals. And soon we'll get to that outer pencil petal descripting edge there. And what's rather nice is you're gonna get little bits of bleed and blend, but not too much. there may be times that you want to sort of do a layer and then let it dry, like do a sort of a round of petals and then let them dry completely. Just if you're a bit concerned about running the risk of suddenly finding yourself with a huge pool of water on the page. Now I'm looking at this and I've got to remember that's the central point. So we've got quite a lot going on here. We need to sort of keep it, keep it fairly even. So I'll be sort of mindful of that when building in my next my next petals. But you can see now why I left that bit of green stem unpainted. Because what I don't want to happen is suddenly I'm, I'm painting petals over green stem and it all looks a bit weird. Okay, we've reached our pencil template there. So that's good news.
And I'm doing that thing where you just sort of keep going <laughs> and you forget to stop. Okay. And then I think, hmm, yeah, I think we will just add a few more on that side. And then we will have evened it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry, and then I'm going to come back in for some detail. That's drying really nicely and I just thought we can carry on and do a few more bits whilst we're waiting for that. So here we have a bud that needs putting in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the first little sap green sort of bulb shape here. Let me just let that run down the side there. And then with a slightly larger brush size four, so quite a lot larger. I'm going to paint in sort of a sort of S curve, I suppose, coming in there. And one mirroring it coming into the center as well. And I will just close that one over. Lovely. Now you usually get a few little extra sepals. So we'll get those tucked in there as well. Really nice. Now other things to be getting on with whilst we're waiting for paint to dry is we can add a little bit of detail to our leaves. Now each sort of leaf growth up the stem we can actually add a bit of detail to. So with my small brush what I'm doing here is I'm just outlining the sort of the bottom edge of that with sap green and suddenly making a bit of a, a sort of closed cup and then just extending that down and then we can paint a little bit of extra sap green in a slightly more concentrated manner. giving that a little bit more interest. It's these tiny little details that suddenly bring it to life. Okay, so I'm just gonna angle the paper so that I don't give myself a big smudge to the hand. And again, just going to blend down that green and the other good thing about doing these extra little bits is you can just make the tips of your leaves just even more fine and delicate and we can find ways of sort of creating a nice extra bit of depth and shadow so this one's closed around the stem as well In the early days of the YouTube videos, I um, was worried about turning the page round. So I was worried you guys might um, might complain about that. I'm not quite sure why, because um, to be honest, more of you notice when I stick my hand in the paint, so <laughs> it's much more sensible to turn the page.
Okay, so I'm just going to finish this off and then we should be at a point where our flowers and buds are dry for us to add the last bits of detail. Our leaves are looking gorgeous. Isn't that wonderful that you can create all that difference from just one sap green colour? It's just all about different levels of concentration. And now this is also about different levels of concentration because we are back to our Alizar in Crimson. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go back and just look for each petal, starting with my first central one. And I am just looking, firstly, if I need to join up any sort of petal lines to just sort of define where, where that petal's got to. And also, with a clean wet brush, using the colour I've got here, to blend up and down just a little bit to give a slightly neater and defined petal. I don't think it needs to be done on every single one, but it is helpful. So this is rather like, again, like the peony in how we're sort of adding just little bits of detail but really oops the main event it's trouble when you're using lots of water not a problem though that's the beauty of watercolor isn't it it's very forgiving so yeah i'm just going around i'm just adding in little bits of alizar and crimson where i feel there is a need to define the petal. But we don't want to go in too heavy. Keep it light, keep it delicate. And remember that with this style, my style, which I call New Botanical Painting, which is also the name of my book, which a lot of you very kindly bought for each other for Christmas, which I'm so grateful for, um, is I like to sort of, yeah, keep it as accurate as possible, but a little bit loose. I'm going to turn the page. Just always keep your head in the game that that is the central point. So all your lines, your fine lines like these, imagine they are all emanating from there. So if I keep turning it, then my hand sort of stays in the same place. Um, lovely, really pleased with that. Now we just need to put in our little bud. So I'll start with some of our lighter pink. a little bit of a frill, maybe a little bit coming out of the base there, and that is quite enough. So the last thing to do is a little bit of shadow, and where's my trusty Prussian blue? So when I am painting plants, my shadow mix is Prussian blue and burnt sienna. It's French ultramarine the rest of the time, but I just find that Prussian blue has a lovely green tone to it. And to be honest, I'm gonna add in a little bit of sap green anyway. Sometimes that's also a good idea to add in the, the color that 
your shadow is going over the top of just to make sure everything ties together really nicely. And I think I'm going to get a size oh, three, three tenths of a zero out of my little pen pot, my brush pot, and I'm now going to fill in some shadow. Now we still need to address this here, so just like the bud beneath it, we're going to have a little bulbous top to the stem. And to be honest, that's pretty much it, although we might see, we might see a few sepals, but I'm not sure of it, but I am going to just start the the broader bulge there of the piece. And then that shadow is going to have traveled down. Certainly gonna have caught up in that one. little bits. A little line of shadow up the side of the stem can also help with a light it's a deciding where your light source is coming from need a little bit more shadow mixed up and we definitely need some under there shows us which part of the cup is sort of over the top of the other one. So I really hope that you have enjoyed watching this lovely little flower painting. I'm excited to see what other flowers are going to come up in the future months because we'll have to continue on with this birth flower theme and you never know we might even do a bouquet or two which would be rather lovely. Just pop in the tiniest bit of shadow. Just underneath. And there we have the lovely carnation. Thanks so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support because your support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And if you subscribe, then you're never going to miss another video. So thank you so much and we'll see you again next time. Bye!